hello to everybody. Now we are sitting in Vienna at the end of the, uh, our investigator meeting uh, devoted for uh, head and neck cancer treatment. And it's a great honor for me now together with me is sitting um, Doug Atkins, uh, the professor of uh, university from St. Louis, uh, George Washington University. Mm -hmm. That's right. Doug, thank you so much for, uh, for uh, this opportunity to interview you. May, may I ask you some questions first of all? Absolutely, sure. Um, you know, it's a really great honor to meet, to meet here the prominent mm -hmm. professor from United States. We are absolutely well know you about your medical experience but for our students maybe for our patient could you please shortly describe your way in oncology mm -hmm. how you became the oncologist and your experience in that. I uh, did my fellowship training at University of Texas San Antonio yeah. completed that in 1992 and have been in St. Louis uh, at Washington University uh, since that time and uh, focused my area of interest in cancers of the head and neck, yes. uh, which is a pretty common cancer, mostly a smoking-induced cancer, but also due to viruses and other causes. So that's my focus. I see about 180 new patients a, a year, yes. uh, strictly caring for patients with that, that disease. Of course, that's very interesting. And the question, so you just represent, like uh, today, uh, yesterday, we are the key speaker in this item, in this mm -hmm. topic. And uh, my question is general. Uh, what is your general opinion and relation for clinical trials at all? Are you tightly involved in this process and for which period of time? Could you please describe So it? I, throughout my career, I've been very uh, uh, focused on supporting clinical trials, not only in in providing trial availability to our patients uh, from external programs, other universities, pharmaceutical companies, but also writing uh, clinical trials myself, investigator-initiated trials. And uh, every patient uh, that I see is offered the opportunity to participate on a clinical trial because they usually build on the basic uh, options we have for patients, the standard of care. We're trying to offer them the standard of care plus potential advantage in uh, getting an edge against their cancer. You know, thank you so much, thank you. You know, sometimes when the patient, are, they are listening to us now, when they are thinking, uh, will it be better for them for you to participate in trial or maybe no to treat in routine way? For example, in such a, in such a case, which advice you'd, get, you'd give for this patient? You know, I tell patients uh, there's a certain number of tools in the toolbox. Those tools are your treatment options. And by participating in clinical trials, you can expand the number of tools in your toolbox which gives you more and more opportunities to find an effective treatment for your cancer. So by participating in clinical trials, you, you, you take advantage of the standard of care, but you also take the advantage of having a new tool in your toolbox. And in that sense, you, you may really benefit. And personally, I've seen many patients benefit directly by participating in clinical trials. So, I, I would never offer a patient a clinical trial if I didn't feel like it was sound and ethical and a trial that I would participate in if I was in that position. Of course. And uh, how do you think in the United States, uh, for example, what percent of the patients who are proposed to participate in trial will uh, agree with that and who will uh, decline this proposition? How do you think in the U.S.? I think uh, that varies a lot throughout the United States. Uh, it, and I think a big part of uh, patients interested in enrolling on clinical trials really depends upon their physician. Mm -hmm. If their physician is highly motivated and feels like this can help them as a patient, most of patients, in my experience, agree to participate on a clinical trial. If the, if the physician is not highly convinced, yes, of course. then uh, the ability to enroll patients on trials is very low. Uh, I can tell you from my own practice, um, I always look at a clinical trial as the first option in treating patients. And in the vast majority of patients that I recommend a clinical trial, yes. they agree to participate and sign a consent form and go forward. With thank you, thank you. And you know, maybe the last question because I know that you are too busy. The last question. So when I was at the exhibition in the uh, uh, ESMO the, this mm -hmm. year, so you know, uh, I even just recorded it specially for Sci TV. This uh, I finished my uh, tour around the exhibition near with the uh, such a, a great uh, large photographs. 
It was exhausted man, exhausted man, was like the face of oncological patient. And so the words were, he is still waiting for his drug. <laughs> you know, he is still waiting for his drug. It means that the industry and science really take care of improvement of the treatment of this patient. That's why I want to ask you the final question. What do you like to wish and to say for the patient with cancer disease, with just now fighting with their disease? What do you wish for them, please? I wish that they maintain hope. Hope is right around the corner. Uh, having trained in an era 30, almost 30 years ago where there were very few options for our patients, uh, hope is, is right around the corner for all of our patients. Uh, research is absolutely the key in providing you that hope. Yes. And uh, I, 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 I would encourage them to maintain hope. Thank you so much. You're I'd welcome. like to say you thank you so much, my pleasure. especially for Sci TV visitors and uh, our spectators. It was, it is here, the Doug Atkins, the professor of medicine, the famous American scientist, oncologist, and mm -hmm. it's really, Doug, it's great honor for us. And thank you so much my for this pleasure, nice sir. interview. My thank pleasure. you so much. Happy thank to you. Go. <laughs>